platform. You're welcome to this webinar. Um, my name is Ernest Ajado from Africa Invest Asset Management. I'm with the Wealth Management Team. We'll be looking at a very engaging topic, personal finance, specifically managing personal and family finance in troubling times. Let's just give a few minutes for more people to join and then we can proceed. Thank you for your understanding.
Hello, good afternoon, everyone. Can you hear me? Okay, um, welcome to this webinar. My name is Ernest Ajadu from Afro Invest Assets Management. I'll be taking us through this very topic, managing personal and family finance in troubling times. If you have any questions, feel free to drop it at the Q&A sections. At the end of the presentation, I, I will address each and every of your questions. Thank you. Okay, this is the content of what we'll be looking at today. We'll be, um, we are not new to what has been happening on with the outbreak of the COVID-19 virus. It has impacted the world economies in a way that many people never anticipated. And the effects of this has wrinkled down to both our personal lives and is also affecting families. Even probably before that, getting and spending money has always been a major challenge for families and individuals. It's even the, it even becomes worse in troubling times as the type we are facing right now. Um, most people manage their finance in a haphazard way, and this has never given them the result. People feel that the money will always take care of itself, and this type of attitude has always been the type that always showed red flags in family budgets, and it always causes embarrassment. You know, when emergencies or things come up, you are not prepared for it. So today we'll be trying to focus on what can you do. What can you do to ensure that you are not embarrassed? And what can you do to ensure that even with the whole um, outbreak, outbreak of the COVID-19 and the troubling time we're facing in, that your family still stays afloat and are still living the way you always live? So let's look at a few things. Currently now, with, um, there has been a whole global reduction in economic activities. And this has caused some, caused some companies to either cut down on their workforce or to cut down on, their, on the salaries of, family, of their workers. And what's the multiplier effect is that you're seeing families not being able to afford what they usually afford. Um, people that are dependent on them are not able to get what they usually get. So what can you do in respect to this? We can achieve this by, first of all, you need to discuss with your family members or everybody who is looking up to you to let them know what the current economic challenges you are facing are. Let's us be realistic about this and how do we manage this? So you need to be open. Let them know the challenges and how the whole economic um, effects has affected you personally and your family. Every household has to adjust. This is not a time where you still live your life the way you lived before the whole pandemic outbreak. You need to adjust. What are some of the things you could adjust if you are always going for vacations every month. You could cut down on such things to be able to accommodate, to make sure that your family still stays afloat. That way, household will be able to live within their means. Hence, there will be no need to terminate existing investment. Most people feel that with the troubling times we are currently facing, that this is the time to terminate investment. This is the wrong approach. This, this is actually the time you should leave your investment. So that way, you are guaranteed a constant income to keep on taking care of your family needs. This takes, in troubling times such as the ones we are currently facing, having a, fin a proper financial plan, this is not um, a time to leave everything to fit. There is a need to actually plan. And in doing so, you need a budget. Simply put, a budget is an estimate of one's income and planned expenditure for a set period of time. So you as, a, as an individual or as a family unit, you know what your income is like. You know what you're expecting to come in and what you're expecting to go out. You need to sit down and plan. What this will help you is to, you'll be able to pinpoint where are the places you are spending more money on and how do you curtail on these things. It also helps you to allocate funds appropriately. You identify your needs, you identify your wants. So you know what can you do away with and what can you not do away with. School fees, rent, these things are, are needs. But shopping and the rest of them, these things could be cut down to be able to accommodate you. It also helps you to develop a good financial discipline. So when you have a budget, you know exactly what you have to spend. And when any other thing contrary to that comes up, you're able to curtail on that and say, no, this is not in the plan. Or how do I accommodate this? It also helps you to allocate your resources better. When you're able to allocate your resources better, you can accomplish more. So let's look at the sample budget. Looking at this, um, the budget below, the first scenario, someone who is earning 100000 
look at what he pays 10,000 for rent, domestic expenses, which could include school fees, food, and the rest of that, transport, and maybe car loan, import expenses. You are in the, at your workplace and someone, you, you are driving home, you see a lovely clothes, a lovely bag, you want to get them. You see a new gadget, you want to get them. These things are import expenses. You can actually do without them. Every Friday or once in a while, you're hanging out with people and you're spending so much. What we're saying is that we're not telling you to eliminate completely some of these things, yes. But we're saying that with a budget, you can actually pinpoint where you spend much money and where, how can you reduce them. Now look at this scenario too. You can see how this person has been able to cut down and is able to save 20%, 20,000 out of um, the 100,000, which represents 20% of the person's income. If this person saves 20,000 for the next five months, the person would have accumulated his monthly income of 100,000. And if this fund was put in an investment, probably it would have also yielded something. And definitely you have more than 100,000, which can act as a buffer, especially in times like this. So what are some of the what are some of the tips you need? People are always concerned about I do budget, I cannot stick to it. So look at we're looking at what are some of the things you could do to help you stick to a budget. First is you need to understand where your money goes in and where your money comes out from. This will enable you to take advantage of savings, opportunities in savings and and savings and investment. You need to differentiate between a need and a want. Do you really need to get that new? Um, iPhone, or would you rather save that money and be able to use it to pay for your school fees next time when the shoes resume? Remind yourself frequently of your goals. This way, you always stay focused because when your goals are in your mind, you will not be distracted by anything. When you go for shopping, don't just shop um, without a list. Organize yourself. Write down a list of what is important to you and what you need the most. So that way you are not you are not tempted to go out of your budget to buy anything out of impulse. Track your expenses for a month. When you track your expenses for a month, you're able to identify the leakages and you're able to close down those leakages. Spend only what is left after savings. So most people feel that the best way is to save and then whatever is left you should invest. Rather, it should be the other way around. At the end of the month, how much are you saving? Is it 10%, 20% of your income? move that into an investment then whatever is left plan yourself with it that also try as much as possible to use a debit card instead of a credit card that way you don't run into debt so once you are using a debit card whatever is in the account is what you spend and once it is exhausted you're able to close down on that and even the consciousness of knowing that this is what i left in my account that alone helps you to stick to your budget then talking about um, educating your family First is you need to learn the principles. You cannot give what you don't have. That is the more reason that you yourself need to understand the principles of managing finance. You can also learn from the mistakes of others. Many of us know about the MMM story. And yes, most of us are yet to take the lessons from it. Even if it didn't affect you, I'm sure it affected someone near you. You need to take the lessons from it. The lessons from it is that you should be careful with where you put in your funds. Talk to a financial advisor regularly. Your wealth manager could be a useful thing. In this particular instance, many people talk to salesperson and confusing it with a wealth manager. A salesperson just wants to sell his or her product and will always advise you, tell you good things about the product, even when it is not suitable for you. Has this person taken into account your risk, your risk factor? What are your expenses like and what is your income like? So the person needs to understand your tolerance for risk to be able to advise you. That is why it is better to trust to a wealth manager than a salesperson. You can also read books and attend more courses. You can start with books like um, The Richest Man in Babylon, um, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. These books can actually give you an introductory lesson to managing finance. Teach each and every uh, member of your family about the value of money. When we were kids, we always had um, a saving box where a piggy bank kind of where you save money. These things can also be a way of teaching your kids how to manage money. Right now, you can even open an investment account for them and monthly you show them the statement. They will, impress, they will be impressed by what is coming out of there and they will even want to give you more money to add up to that. And that's where you're also saving, you're also teaching them how to save. And in that way, from an early age, these kids start learning how and the importance of saving. 
The truth is that learning to manage money is a developmental skill. You can't just wake up one morning and you become an expert in it. That is why it is more important to start it at an early age. And then as the child or as the individual grows, the person is able to learn more about money. Set reasonable spending limits for them. Let them know what the current economic challenges are. And then let them know this is what you can do and this is what you cannot do. You can cut down on a little bit of the expensive lifestyle like flamboyant birthday parties. I mean, what is wrong with you doing a, just a small birthday party, just the kid and the immediate family, considering the troubling times we are in? And also teach them to grow money, not just to your kids, but also your spouses. Let them learn the importance of growing money over time through savings and investment with the advantage of compounded interest, which helps the money grow faster. Now, let's look at investment opportunities for the family. Um, first, when you talk about investment opportunities, you are, you are looking at, you are considering what is your risk tolerance, what is your financial goals, is it a short-term goal, is it a medium-term goal, or is it a long-term goal? Depending on any of these, this will actually determine which of the investment, um, which of the investment vehicles you pick. For instance, when you are looking at um, taking care of short-term short -term, um, needs, you are looking at short-term investment with low risk. So you can't take off your, your child school, school fees that's supposed to be due by maybe three months time and you take it into a real estate investment just because you had a real estate gives you a, a whole lot of return on investment. That is a wrong approach. Instead, you pick short-term um, instruments like money market instruments, which usually have tenors ranging between 90, and a 90 days and a maximum of one year. The likes of treasury bills, term deposits like an Afro Invest will have the, the Afro Investing Comp portfolio, which guarantees you a return for even a short period as a month or two months. Money market instruments like Afro Invest Plutus Fund or Commercial Paper. The money market instrument, you can either the money market instrument or the Afro Invest uh, or the term deposit, you can either decide to your rent, your rent is you pay it annually. You can actually split it down to monthly and ensure you open an investment account where every month you move these funds into this investment so that by the time your rent is due, you don't have to struggle much to pay for this rent. Same applies to your school fees. It comes once in every three months. You can actually save these funds monthly. At the end of every three months, you withdraw from this and you pay these school fees effortlessly. Same with commercial papers. You can, if you can't be able to afford the minimum for for commercial papers, which is usually five million, you can actually invest into money market instruments, money market instru money market funds, which is actually invested into treasury bills and commercial papers. This will also uh, give you the opportunity to take advantage of um, the rates in commercial papers. Next is the medium term investment instrument. So what are these? This they may not be as liquid as the money as as the short term instrument, but then they are not as rigid as the ones for the long term. This you can use to take care of, um, you have your project, you're looking at getting an, a property, or you're looking at getting, um, it could be a project saving, you're looking at saving money for a long-term project. Maybe you want to start up your business and you're looking at, okay, how do I accumulate funds? It could be even for your child's tertiary education, you want to take your child to school abroad. You can take advantage of this type of instrument. Majorly, majority of the investment opportunities in this category are usually fixed income mutual funds like um, fixed income mutual funds that invest in debt instruments like um, NIDF. NIDF um, that stands for Nigerian International Debt Fund. This fund is basically invested into um, debt instruments issued by either the federal government, the state government, or a few regulated, a few good corporate organizations. And it is well managed by uh, Afro Invest Asset Management. You also have the Afro Invest Dollar Fund. So you are concerned with um, the exchange rate, you are concerned with devaluation of the Naira. And yet you want to take your child for school abroad and you want to start saving at an early age. You can take advantage of instruments like this and then invest gradually with as little as a thousand dollars. You can start in investing in this and plan towards um, your child's tertiary education. Then we also have people who are eager to invest in the stock market, but you don't know how to go around it. You can actually invest into a pool that is professionally managed. That way, your risk is well managed. You can, for instance, the Afro Invest Equity Fund. This is a, a mix of equity and income, which helps you regulate, um, manage the risk, 
exposure of your portfolio. Then you, the next one is for long-term investments. Long-term investments, you're looking at retirement. You as a family should have a plan for your retirement. It is never too early to start planning for your retirement. You're also looking at school fees, long-term projects. Are you looking at um, going into a much more larger scale, expanding your business? Are you looking at um, getting whatever it is, it is, but so far as the tenor of this particular goal is between two years and above, you can take advantage of things like this, like real estate. Real estate is good, but it is not so liquid. So you have to understand it. And when you're investing into this, be ensure that the funds you're investing into this are for long-term purposes, equities. The returns in equities are good, but the risk exposure is also high. So you need to understand this. So it's always recommended that if you must invest into equities, you should have a long-term horizon. Talking about bonds, bonds are long-term debt instruments that have tenors with five years, 10 years, but they are fixed income. So they guarantee you a steady income, a coupon payment that is always made every six months. So with this, you are sure, when you put in your funds here, you are sure that you are getting a guaranteed return, a coupon every six months. And with this, you can actually plan yourself. Then Euro bonds, you are looking at diversifying your portfolio out of um, Naira instruments and you want to go into dollars. Euro bonds can also offer you a good opportunity to invest your funds in dollars and get returns. They are also similar to bonds. They also pay their coupons every six months, but it's also in dollars. You also have pension. This will ensure that you are well taken care of long after you retire. So a pension account is a must have for every individual who is working to ensure that by the time you get old and you are unable to work, you can still get something out of your pension fund. Then talking about life insurance, this is about by the time you are gone, what are you leaving for the people you are living in the world? What is it they are leaving behind for them? Are they going to be struggling or are you leaving something behind for them like life insurance where yeah, by the time you are no longer there, they can still be well taken care of. This basically also is just a summary of how you can actually manage yourself in these times and then selecting the proper investment instrument to suit a particular um, goal. That will be all. I will be taking questions now. Okay, um, someone is asking about the term. term is, I need to know about term deposits. Term deposits are more like um, the banks, they usually call them your fixed deposits, where you invest a particular amount and they guarantee you a particular return within a term time, between a term a tenor. It could be one month, two months, three months, or as the case may be, 60 days. So you actually, when you put in your fund, you are guaranteed a return. So if you are putting in your funds and they are telling you it is 10%, you are sure that by the expiration of the tenor, you are definitely going to get um, your return. It is guaranteed. Okay. So um, for Afri Invest, we we'll have the AIP, which is also uh, likened to a term deposit where the, the, the funds are invested into a very low risk instruments that will be able to guarantee you a return on your investment. Okay. Adesola is asking, would the presentation be made available to us? If you register and we'll have your email, definitely after the presentation, we'll be sending, we'll be sending the, we'll send, we'll send the presentations across to everyone who attended, so long as we have your email address. Okay. Um, Johnson is asking, how do I go about investing in 10 deposits? You can reach out to any of the of our contact persons and then either on through the phone or you can send the mail on the email that is on actually on your screen right now. Okay. Uh, are the investment instruments insured? Well, it depends on what um, investment instrument you are talking about. If you are talking about life insurance, yes, it is insured. But then if you are talking about um, the likes of um, the money markets or the bonds, they are not always insured. What is the percentage interest on your dollar investment and what is the minimum amount one can invest in? Now, if you want to invest in into Euro bonds, usually the minimum is about is $200,000. 
and the yields currently right now is about um, 10 to 11 percent that is for the euro bonds which are long-term investments so there you can get um, coupons month, um, every biannually but then if you don't have up to that we we'll have one of our um, products we just launched in the African invest dollar fund which is actually a pool of funds also invested into dollar instrument and it avails you the opportunities of investing with as little as a thousand dollars and the minimum tenor is um, about 180 days roughly six months and the projected return is between seven to seven to six percent which is still higher than what you would have gotten on either your domiciliary account or on a fixed deposit in dollars so it still avails you the opportunity of earning something which is still good still good and with just a minimum of a thousand dollars you can invest into our dollar mutual fund after invest dollar fund okay um Bello is asking do you offer any islamic concept investments well um that will fall under the sukuk bond where we can help you buy bonds for now we could also help you um we can also help you with the portfolio management tailored to meet your religious um, beliefs goals. So we can talk to any of our fund managers and we could speak to you and then run you through on how we can set up a portfolio that will be suitable for you. How secured are long and medium term investments? Well, and when you buy bonds, there is when you buy bonds for instance which is under long term instrument you can either be buying fgm bond or you can be buying those of the corporate organizations for the fgm bond um the federal government will definitely live up to the obligations so they will always pay you so your coupons are always um, assured for the medium term instruments the security of most of them because they are set up as a mutual fund basically you have a custodian who is holding the funds who is in custody of the funds you have a registrar who is who holds together your information so that even if the fund manager is unable to do well these people can actually step in you also have the trustee who is more like your representative in the fund to ensure that the investment objective of that particular fund is strictly adhered to so this helps to put in a guarantee into some of these um investment so also for the long-term um, instruments, the types of euro bond, when you are buying euro bond, you're also looking at the credit ratings, which also gives you a, a picture of the credit worthiness of the institution issuing that particular bond, as the case may be. Okay, um, someone is saying I should speak more on specifically short-term investment opportunities around us in Nigeria. Okay, for short-term investment opportunities, you are talking about the treasury bills, which is um, usually issued by the federal government, and you're always sure that you are getting back your funds because the federal government will always live up to its expectations. It has tenors from the primary markets, you are looking at 90 days, 182 days, and 362 days. Then from the secondary markets, you can have various tenors on it. It is, it, is, it is net of tax, that means there's no tax charged on it and you have the option of either getting your interest up front or back end. You also have the money market instrument. For the fact that they are invested, you also have the money, money, market, money market funds which are invested into um, money market instruments like treasury bills. For the fact that they are invested into these instruments, it avails them the opportunity to also be tax free and also the flexibility of them um, you can invest and after the minimum locking period of, of of 90 days you can actually withdraw your funds at no extra charge you also have the commercial papers issued by corporate organizations so for this you are looking at them um, what you want to check is your corporate organization issuing this particular instrument what is their credit worthiness this will help you to make a good decision on this are there long term um are there long-term investments that have low risk? Yes, there are. For instance, um, you have um, the bonds, either the euro bonds or the bonds issued by the federal government of Nigeria. You are sure that so far as, so long as the government is still in operation, they will always live up to its obligations. So you can actually pull into this. These are low risk instruments as compared to real estate, 
which actually offers you a higher return but also a higher risk. What is the minimum amount for amount for money markets for money market? Okay, with the Afri Invest Bluetooth fund, the minimum investment amount is five thousand naira, and then you can add a multiples of um, one thousand naira as the case may be. Give examples of investments I can put my funds that I need in another four to five months. Okay, for an investment that you need your funds in the next five to four months, you have the likes of treasury bills, you have the likes of our Bluetooth money market fund, and you also have um, Afri investment portfolio, which can actually guarantee you a return within that. You can actually, all you need to do is to put in the funds and then choose which tenor is suitable for you. That is for the Afri invest income portfolio. And then you are sure that within the period you need them, you can have them back. For the Plutus Money Market Fund, after the lock-in period of three months, you can actually take pass or all of your funds at no charge and be able to take care of whatever needs you have. Okay. What is the least amount that can be invested in treasury bills? Um, to invest in treasury bills, the CBN came up um, with the regulation where you have to have up to 50 million to actually invest but in Africa invest in a bit to be able to accommodate other investors we know not everyone can get up to that we're able to accept a minimum of a hundred thousand naira to invest for you in treasury bills so um anonymous are there any new ipos listed um in your portfolio okay um i feel one of the we don't have any new IP, but we had a newly launched fund. Due to the new regulation of CBN, when you list mutual funds right now, you don't need to do an initial IPO. So basically, all you need to do is to get SEC approval and the funds start running immediately. That means that investors can bring in their funds and not wait for the period to elapse before they can start earning returns on their investment. So once you invest immediately, you start getting returns on your investment. And this all is asking, even if it is just one million, one minute, can I put in those investments and get back in four to five minutes? Yes, you can. Even with just one million, yes, you can. You can even, we have 10 hours, 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, and as the case may be. So you can actually put in and you get those funds back at the expiration of the, of the tenor. Treasury bills are drastically low now. As I had, is it true? Yes, um, CBN in a bid to 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 encourage um, people to invest into the real sector decided to drop the rates from treasury bills. So, but then that doesn't mean that you still, if you are not comfortable with the rates, you can also look into other other um, investment vehicles like the EIP, which the rates you could get depending on the amount and the tenor you're looking at, you can actually get rates that are a bit higher than what is offered in the treasury bills instruments. Okay, I don't know if there is any question again. Okay, thank you everyone that attended and um, if you have any more questions, you have um, the numbers there depending on your location, or you can just send us an email and we'll get across to you to answer any more of your questions and also to put you through, assuming you want to have um, a one-on-one -on -one discussion where you want to can call any of the numbers and they will definitely attend to you. There are seasoned world managers that will try to assess your risk and recommend to you investments that are tailored to meet exactly what your needs are. I'll take the last one, which is, um, which medium-term investment platform would you recommend highly with good returns. Okay, when you're talking about the medium term, I'll recommend um, the NIDF, which is actually invested into bonds. Reason for this is that um, yields in bonds right now are currently high as compared to the money market instruments. So you can actually invest now when the yields are still very high and you can take advantage of that and get good returns on your investments. Thank you so much everyone for attending. Do have a a wonderful Friday.